Hi there, this is Russell from Let's Get Racing. Uh, I'm joined by another special guest this morning. As you know, Let's Get Racing is all about increasing the diversity in racing and creating an inclusive environment for those people who perhaps didn't see themselves as typical of uh, someone who'd get involved in racing, either going to race days or participating as an owner. So um, we're very lucky to be joined by Andy Llewellyn this morning. And I'm gonna, Andy, just to say a little bit about what makes him unique and perhaps illustrate some of the diversity that's already present within racing. So, hi Andy, thanks for joining us. Can you say a little bit about yourself, please? Hi, um, I'm Andy Llewellyn. Um, I've worked in racing since 2000, I was 16. I went to the British Racing School. Um, um, I'm gay and I've worked my way up the ladder um, from 16 years old to now be becoming an assistant trainer to Oliver Sherwood. Um, there are quite a few more people in gay racing now than there was before. Um, and not only gay people, um, black people, Indian people, um, and there's a, a lot of diversity now in racing, which never we never used to have. And so where are you from originally? I can hear a little bit of an accent, Andy. So originally I'm from Cardiff. I was born um, in a little uh, suburb called Ely in Cardiff. Um, and basically not many people in Cardiff would get involved in horse racing. Um, one of my friends and, um, used to have a little um, Welsh Section B stud, leading range stud, and I used to help out with them. And, um, her sister had an accident in, um, in racing, and I originally wanted to be a vet, but I was never bright enough to be a vet, unfortunately. Um, so um, she said, oh, well, why don't you go to the British Racing School? And I've got an old application form, so I filled it out, went for an interview, was there for nine weeks, and then never looked back. So it's a nine week course at the British Racing School. What, what do you learn? What do they take you through? So basically I never sat on a horse until I, until I went there. So basically you learn everything. You learn how to muck out, how to deal with horses, how to tack up, how to ride. And you, you're literally there for nine weeks. And unfortunately not many people last through the nine weeks because they, they find it quite hard. They think it's going to be easy and it isn't easy. But you start off with a couple of weeks in the, in the indoor school, learning how to trot and everything. And then you progress to an outside around a circle canter. And then you go on to the normal gallops, the straight mile gallops. And then you just learn the techniques in riding and also the horsemanship on the floor. And what did you find hardest to learn? Actually, the trot, which is one of the simplest paces, but it's getting the rhythm of the one, two, because when they're cantering, it's more of a flowing rhythm. But I found the trotting was the hardest. Okay. Okay. And um, what was your first job in racing after you graduated from the racing school? So I was very lucky when I graduated from the racing school. They do ask you where you'd like to go. And I said, you know, I didn't want to be in Wales, but I'd like to be quite close to Wales so I could go home if I needed to. Um, and I ended up being placed at Nicky Henson's, which is now he, what, he is champion trainer. Um, he wasn't then, but I was very lucky that I got to ride some lovely horses and, and I learned a lot there. And I stayed there for three seasons and then I moved on to Noel Chance, who looks like trouble who won the Gold Cup and then yeah. just progressively worked my way up the ladder. Oh, fantastic. And so to say a little bit more about your job now. So you work for Oliver Sherwood, who's um, a very successful uh, national hunt trainer and you're his assistant. Can you say what that entails and what you do on a day to day basis? So basically, um, I go in every morning. I'll go through the board of um of the lots with Oliver so basically what people are riding which horses um, and then I'll do um, the, the computer stuff the website trainers quotes fill out the medical book if the horses have had medication so the BHA can check what medication they've had if they come in for so basically if they run at the races and then they have to have a, a blood test or a urine sample just to make sure that our matches you know our records match up um, and then I'll ride out three or four lots a day um, and speak to the lads about how their horses are and speak to Oliver about what his race plans are for the horses that week ahead. Um, and also when I go to the races, I'll represent Oliver in the yard. Um, so basically if there was two horses running, one was running at Kempton and one was running at Newbury, 
I'd go to Kempton, Oliver would go to Newbury, I'd deal with the owners and put the saddle on for the jockey and, and talk through the race and everything. And so would you and Oliver always separate on a race day or would you sometimes be at the same course? It's very rarely we're at the same course. Um, we'd be at the same course if we had four or five runners at one meeting, but it's very rare if, it, if we're there together. Um, basically, like I said, if we have different horses at different meetings, I'll always go and represent at one meeting and he'll represent at another. Um, and, and, and sometimes it's just one meeting where if Oliver's busy with meetings or other owners, I can then go and represent him or, or he'll go himself. So you, you'd kind of be his de facto representative at any point if, uh, if he wasn't available. And mm -hmm. on a day-to-day -day basis in the yard, how do your jobs differ? So we understand what you do, but what would he be doing differently to you on a, on a normal day? So basically Oliver would be training the horses. So he goes up in the Jeep, watches the horses on the gallops, um, speaks to the lads and they report back to him what the, the horses feel like, etc. Um, and then it's, it's ultimately down to Oliver what horses he wants to put in what races. You know, he, he'll, he, I mean, he's very good at asking um, my opinion as in, does this horse want two miles? Does it want two and a half miles? Do you think if this track would suit it rather than that track? Um, and, and we communicate that way. And obviously, the longer I've worked for Oliver, the more um, open he is to my suggestions as well, because we're kind of working on the same page. Sure, sure. And um, I'm not sure if you're allowed to say this, because it's a bit of a naughty question, but have you got a favourite horse? Um. I love all the horses, to be honest. I know that's a cliche answer, but um, I've, we've got a, a horse there which I really like, and he's Oliver's. Uh, he's very good at training three mile chasers. That's what it is. To me, that's what I think his speciality is. Like many clouds and things like that, the, the three mile chasers is his speciality, and he's got a horse there called Severano, who um who was second a few weeks ago in the EBF final at Kempton over two and a half. And he's run over two and a half all this year over hurdles. And I think when he gets over fences and over three miles, I think that's when you'll see the best of him. Sure. And is Severano uh, owned by Tim Sider? Is that that's right. Yeah. 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 Mm -hmm. So, um, so for those people watching, Tim Sider is one of the, the bigger owners in national hunt racing. Well, you, you recognize yeah. his looks there. They're white with um with red cross a uh, red uh, cube. Yeah. So it's kind of yeah, yeah. check, yeah, yeah. Um and uh so final question would be what are your ambitions within racing? You're an assistant trainer now, so you've you know you've risen up from uh, from being quite junior when you graduated from the racing school to a really senior position in a in a big yard. What would be next for you if you had the option? So like I said originally, because I was I was born in Cardiff in the city and none of my family are in racing and, and Unfortunately for me, I haven't come back, come from a wealthy background. I don't have the financial backing to become a trainer, even though I would love to train myself. That's what I've always wanted to do. Never wanted to be a jockey. I always wanted to be a trainer. Um, and like I said, it is financial suicide unless you have somebody who can push you the way through. And if you're lucky enough to get a good horse that can put you in the, in the lights. Um, I, that's my dream, but in all honesty, that's probably not going to happen. So I have to look down another road where I'd love to be a racing manager for um, a big owner where I could go to the sales and buy some horses, you know, ride the horses at home where the trainers are, represent the owner at the races um, and, and do a, a race plan with the owner, and with the trainer and work alongside both of them. That's what my ideal job would be, but they're very far and few between. Um, or otherwise I'd like to go into the hospitality side of things, you know, where I've worked in racing for so long, I know the inside of racing and how it works. And I'd like to show people from the outside who go there just for the day to let them see what the bigger picture is behind it. It's not, you just bring a horse to the races and run it. It's the sure. hard work behind everything. So, sure. well, Andy, thanks ever so much uh, for your time. It would have been really interesting especially for those of our members and those people who are connected to Let's Get Racing to kind of understand the role of an assistant trainer, also to hear about the training that's available to bring people who aren't experienced with horses into the industry. So we really appreciate your time. Thanks ever so much. Best of luck for the season when uh, it, it kicks back off again and, um, and we'll be in touch and invite you along to a couple of our events if that's okay. Yeah, absolutely. Brilliant. Thank Cheers. you very much. Thank Take you. care. Cheers. Bye-bye.